Okay, uh, I'm going to have a look at a few uh, SL past paper questions on um, kind of basic differentiation integration techniques. Okay, so here's the first question. Um, we're given a function, we're given what the derivative is, uh, we're given the x intercept at minus 1, and then we're told to find f of x. So we see that we've got a derivative, uh, therefore we should be thinking about integration. Also, x intercept at x is minus 1, that means but when x is minus 1, the y value is 0, so we can write down that coordinate. So as long as you remember our basic rule of integration, we're going to write this down. So we'll write this down in the exam, integral of 3x squared plus 18x dx. That's going to integrate to give us this, increase the power by 1, divide by the new power. Don't forget to put the plus c. Obviously, we can simplify out uh, to give us this, y equals x cubed plus 9x squared plus c. Um, but yeah, don't forget the plus c because we now need to find out what the c is by putting x is minus 1, y is 0. Put the values in. Again, show all this method in the exam. We end up with c is negative 8 and then write the final answer uh, replacing c with minus 8. So that's 6 marks. Uh, should be relatively straightforward. Uh, next, we're told that the graph of f has an inflection point at x equals p and find p. So we look back at this inflection. We've already been given the gradient function. Uh, if it's got an inflection point, we know that the second differential, so if we differentiate it a second time, the second differential must be equal to 0. And then we don't know if it's a, a horizontal or not horizontal. We don't care. We just care that it's an inflection point. Um, so I actually write this down in the exam. f double dash x is equal to 0 if there's an inflection point. So therefore, we just solve this when it's a second differential equal to 0. And then there we go, x is negative 3. So this is really just testing, do you understand the definition uh, or one of the conditions necessary to have an inflection point? Okay, next question. Um, this is kind of using the fundamental theorem of calculus. Um, if we know that the integral from 1 to 3 of f of x is 5, then we need to find out the integral from 1 to 3 of 2 f of x. Well, we can bring a 2 outside the integral because it's just a constant. So we can just write down that integral of 2 f of x is the same as 2 lots of the integral of f of x. Oh, we know the integral from 1 to 3 of f of x is 5. Therefore, 2 times 5 is 10. Okay, so we get answer of 10. Um, second one is a bit more difficult. Um, integral from 1 to 3 of 3x squared plus f of x that is exactly the same as the integral of 1 to 3 of 3x squared plus the integral from 1 to 3 of f of x. Okay, so we're using the rule that uh, we can integrate both parts of it, uh, the bit that's inside the integral as long as they're adding together. Um, I can now do this in two bits. So I can work out what the integral from 1 to 3 of 3x squared is. Basically, I'm going to integrate it and then put in the limits of 1 and 3. And then the second bit, I know what 1 to 3 of f of x, the integral of that is. I've been told that is 5, so that answer is going to be 5 here. So I work out this bit, which gives me 27 take away 1, and then add on my answer of 5, I get an answer of 31. Okay, question number 3. Uh, I've got integral of x e x squared minus 1. Okay, this is one, I mean, there's, there's, you can possibly use substitution. I prefer just kind of integration by inspection. You notice that x squared minus 1 differentiates to give you something that's pretty close to x. If you differentiate x squared minus 1, you get 2x rather than x. So we kind of use integration by inspection or guess and check method um, to arrive at this function here. And the reason I get this function is because if I differentiate this function, I get back to this function. Therefore, this function must integrate to give this function here. So if you differentiate x e to the x squared minus 1, the 2x is going to get brought down because we times by the differential, and then when it times by a half, yeah, we get back to this, and then we put the plus c on. Okay, that's the first bit. Um, we're given the sec for the second bit that when x is minus 1, y is 3, so we basically stick some numbers in. So we know that there's my function when x is minus 1, so I can stick minus 1 in here. I get an answer of 3. Well, minus 1 all squared minus 1 is just 0. So I get 3 equals a half e to the 0 plus c. e to the 0 is just 1. Therefore, c is 2.5. Okay, so therefore, this is my end equation. 
Okay, next one. Uh, this time sometimes seems a bit confusing. Um, I got the derivative graph. So this is not f of x. This is f dash of x, and it says like classify point C on the original graph. So not on the derivative graph, but on the original graph. Okay, so the idea on this one is that the the gradient. This is basically telling me that the the gradient function is positive beneath the axis. The gradient function is negative, and at this point here, the gradient is zero because it's the gradient graph. Okay, so I can therefore say, look. Uh, at this point, the gradient is positive, the gradient graph is positive, the gradient graph is negative, the gradient graph is zero. So I have this situation here, a positive gradient, zero gradient, negative gradient, which gives me the maximum. Okay, so I'd say something like this, change in gradient from positive to negative, and the gradient is zero when x is negative one, therefore, when x is negative one, we have uh, a maximum point. Okay, for part B, um, Oh, sorry, for, yeah, for part B, we look at point A. So point A, we can say that the, the first differential is not zero, so the gradient f, f dash x is not equal to zero, because otherwise it would be on the axis here. But the gradient of the gradient graph is zero. The gradient of the gradient graph is f double dash x. So therefore, we've got this situation here. The first differential is not zero, but the second differential is zero. And technically, we have to say that the signs have changed. So the gradient of the gradient graph changes from negative to positive, therefore we have a non-horizontal inflection. Okay, and then the last one says on the graph, sketch a possible graph for f double dash x. So remember this is f dash x, now f double dash x we want the gradient of the gradient graph. So the gradient of the gradient graph here is negative, the gradient of the gradient graph here is zero, the gradient of the gradient graph is positive, then it's zero, and the gradient of the gradient graph is negative. So we've got negative, zero, positive, zero, negative. And therefore, one possible way of showing that. So therefore, this is f double dash x. It's below the axis, which means it's negative. It's above the axis, it's positive. And it's below the axis, therefore it's negative. Okay. Another way of thinking about this one is that this is a cubic. If we're differentiating in a cubic, we're going to get a quadratic. So we're kind of expecting this sort of shape. And it's going to be symmetrical about four, because that's uh, halfway between halfway between the zeros uh, that we've got previously, and we can see it there. Okay. Uh, next question. Uh, we're given f of x. Uh, first off, write down f dash of x. That should be easy enough. And then find the equation of the normal when x is two, y, y is three. Okay. So I differentiate it. There we go. Minus three over two x plus one. I stick in when x is 2, so when x is 2, stick it in, I get a gradient of negative 2. Therefore, equation of the normal, I'm going to use the formula minus 1 over that gradient. So minus 1 over minus 2 gives me a half, so therefore the normal has a gradient of a half. Then I'm going to use the formula y minus y1 equals m bracket x minus x1. Gradient is a half, x value is 2, y value is 3. There we go, finish, I can leave it like that. Y minus three equals a half bracket x minus two. Okay, part C, um, it says that this normal intersects with the curve at two, three, and one other point. So first off, this is the equation of the normal. And I'm gonna say, when is this normal intersecting with this curve here? I'll start with this time by actually rearranging the equation of the normal. So it looks like y equals, in this case, it's a half x. X shouldn't really be on the bottom. So a half x, so I should make that clearer. Something like that. A half x plus 2. Uh, and then I'm basically going to make these uh, equivalent to each other because they intersect. Therefore, when is the equation of the graph intersecting with the equation of the line? Okay, so when are they going to intersect? Well, first off, let's rearrange everything, make it equal to 0. I'm going to make life easy for myself if I times everything by 4. So I'm going to get a quadratic, and then I need to uh, factorise this. Um, I'm going to have a 3x and an x. Actually, it factorises to give me 3x plus 4, and then an x minus 2. So this solution here is when x is negative 4 over 3. So that says, well, the other solution is when x is 2. You can see back here, look, there we go. That was one of the solution. The other solution is when x is negative 4 over 3. So at this point here, the, the line the tangent will intersect, so the normal will intersect this graph. 
Okay, next one. Um, write down an expression for the area of R. That's basically integrating between minus 1 and 2. Um, and again, it's the same function. So it's the function f, which was this one here. So that's my original function. So I'm going to integrate that to integrate minus 3 over 4 x squared plus x plus 4. That was the original thing. Integrate it. I get this. And I get this between negative 1 and 2. Now, obviously, I can simplify this a little bit. Now, negative 3 over 4 divided by 3. Uh, if you can rearrange, hopefully you see that the 3 and 3, they're going to cancel out. So you just get negative 1 over 4. And then I'm going to stick in x is 2. And then I'm going to stick in x is negative 1 and then take them away. This way, you have to be a little bit careful with negatives. The first one gives you 8. The second one you take away. But then this is negative. You get a negative 3.25. So you get 8 minus minus 3.25. So you get 11.25. Okay, so that one, be careful with negatives. Minus 1 cubed. Still going to be negative. A negative time, negative, that's going to give you positive, etc. Okay, and then one last question to look at. Um, given what f of x is, uh, they've given us a little sketch. First off, they say find what f dash x is. Well, actually, they say show that it's equal to this thing here. Okay, so if they said show that, we need to make sure we show good method. We're going to show that we're going to use the quotient rule, u dash v minus u v dash all over v squared. Write down that u is ln x, therefore u dash is 1 over x. V is x, the one on the bottom. V dash is 1. Stick it into my formula. I need to put this intermediate step in. So I'm going to get 1 over x times x minus ln x times 1 all over x squared. Uh, obviously, 1 over x times x gives me 1. Take away ln x over x squared, which is what I was asked to show. Okay, But make sure you show the intermediate step. Okay. Find the coordinates of B when the curve reaches its maximum. So we've already got the gradient, and then whenever we see the word maximum, we're therefore thinking uh, maximum, therefore the gradient is zero. Again, you can write that down. So when is this equation equal to zero? Bring the x squared over here. When is 1 minus ln x equal to zero? Bring it over here. 1 equals ln x. Again, if you remember laws of logs, that is log base e x, therefore e to the power e to the power 1 must equal x. <coughs> so therefore, the x coordinate is e. And then, but it says coordinates. So if we know that the x coordinate is e, I need to put e into here and e into here to find the y coordinate. Okay, so if I do that, then I'm going to get y is equal to ln e over e. Ln e log base e, e is just 1. So you get 1 over e. So the coordinate is e, comma, 1 over e. Okay, and then the last one. Find the coordinates of c, the point of inflection on the curve. You can see that c, it's not horizontal inflection, it's going to be non-horizontal inflection. So therefore, again, I'm going to write this down. I need the second differential equal to 0. So I want the second differential equal to 0. Therefore, I'm going to have to differentiate this function. This is the function I've got. 1 minus ln x over x squared. Again, let's use the quotient rule, there's u, there's u dash, there's v, there's v dash, stick it into my formula, I've got minus 1 over x times x squared minus 1 minus ln x bracket 2x all over x squared squared, if I simplify that out, I should hopefully get this, which gives me a 2x ln x take away 3x over x to the 4, and the same idea as last time, if the second differential is 0, then I can just say that the, this top part must be equal to 0. So 2 ln x minus 3. You see basically I've divided everything by x here. So I'm going to get 2 ln x minus 3 over x cubed. Make this top part of the numerator equal to 0. So that gives me 2 ln x minus 3 equals 0. If I rearrange it, I'm going to get ln x is 1.5, therefore x is e to the 1.5 is x, therefore x is e to the 1.5. And then I haven't quite finished because I need to find the y coordinate. So again, stick this x coordinate into my original function, which is this one here. So sticking my x value into this and this, and you'll see that I get 
y coordinate is ln of e 1.5 over e to the 1.5. Now, laws of log say that I can bring the power down and then ln and e and inverse functions are going to cancel out. So I just get the 3, point, the 3 over 2 or the 1.5 on the top and then I get e to the 1.5 on the bottom. So I'll rewrite it as 1.5 e and I can write it as e to the minus 3 over 2 and then that is my uh, y coordinate.